All right, hello, and welcome back to my Unity Tools tutorial. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, basically implemented a, a cursor and painting grid tiles and a new better method of like finding out where the cursor is within the grid so we know what tile to paint and whatnot. So basically, I'll quickly show you what we've done. So I'll create a new editor map. We'll just expand that a bit. And I'll put paint single tile to true. So if I hold down Alt and click, you'll see that it will paint the tiles, he says. Yeah, see, tiles getting painted. And we can also paint an area. So if I hold down Alt and click on, oh, also I actually hold down Alt and not Control. Uh, so click one tile to be a corner and another tile to be a corner and then the middle mouse button, it'll draw a square of tiles. And again, So that's how that works, and I'll just go over the code now. Okay, so first off, we're just going to be doing the mouse cursor. Uh, sorry, I'll be explaining how the mouse cursor works. Uh, basically, it's just a little uh, icon that moves around with the grid. Uh, first off, uh, we've got a little bit of code to check whether we should draw the cursor or not. So we can basically, uh, I just have it bound to a button in the GUI, so you can turn it on or off as you please. Uh, first off, so if we don't want to draw it, we check if it's null, and if it's not, and it's still active, then we disable the game object and then return, because we're done, we don't want to call anything else. But if we do want to draw it, uh, first off, we check if it's null, and if we do, we call this initialize cursor method, which is basically just creates an empty game object, adds a sprite renderer to it, assigns that uh, cursor sprite that we wanted to the sprite renderer, and sets the sorting order to 9,999, just so it appears over every sprite in the uh, in the fucking grid of tiles. That's one. Sorry, words failed me. Uh, next thing we have is uh, another check to make sure that the cursor is active in the hierarchy. Uh, so if you are wanting to draw it, and like the last frame you clicked on, uh, if if you've just switched from a wanting not displaying it to displaying it and it was still deactivated in the hierarchy let's just make sure that it's true or active in the hierarchy and finally to get the uh, mouse to get the position so it uh, sticks with the grid of tiles uh, we basically just take take the uh, mouse position in the world and round that down to the nearest whole number so one two three whatever so we do that for the x and y coordinates uh, but we need to keep it as a float because well, we're needing to put this back into a vector three to set it as the cursor's position. I don't think we need to use floats, but I don't think it makes that much difference. But whatever. And that's how the cursor's done. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how the uh, new method for working out where the mouse is in relation to the grid of tiles and chunks and whatnot it works. Uh, basically, it's more efficient because we're not having to cycle through uh, each chunk to check whether the mouse position is within that chunk. Uh, we are just using maths to work it out, which I'll just explain now. So we've got a couple of new variables. So the bottom, this is basically the bottom left tile in the grid uh, and the top right tile in the grid to signify the two corners. And we've also got the width and height of the grid in both tiles and chunks, which is Basically, chunks is just tiles divided by five. But same thing. And finally, we have an x index and y index. These are values for representing the chunk index of uh, where the mouse cursor currently is. So that'll be basically the y will indicate the row, and the x will indicate the chunk in that row. Okay, so as I said, width and tiles is just, it gets the first row in the list because all the rows will be the same width and multiply it uh, and gets the number of, it gets the list of chunks in the row and multiplies that by five because remember this tiles in row is actually the uh, chunks which are five by five grids of tiles. And height and tiles is just the number of rows we actually have times five because each row is only is only one dimensional of chunks and each chunk is five tiles high so that'll be the number of rows times five 
And again, we just calculate the width and height in chunks by dividing that those two previous numbers by five. Uh, I don't think I actually use that, but it's nice to store it just in case. Uh, finally, we work out the bottom left tile. Uh, since our, I think the row, well, the list of rows are stored in descending order, so the at the top of the screen, uh, this chunk that I'm going to draw on here just to demonstrate. That chunk there-ish is uh, zero in the index of the row of tiles, in the list of rows, sorry. And this one and this one is the last index. So it goes downwards. So basically, to get the bottom left tile, we want to get the last element. We want to get the last row. And we want to get the first uh, tile chunk in that array. Because for tile chunks, they go from left to right. So that, so tile chunks on this side of the grid would be zero, whereas on this side of the grid will be the last element in the list. And what we do is we just get the starting coordinates, because if you remember from last time, uh, the grids are drawn basically from the bottom left tile going outwards. So this would be essentially zero, zero, uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and you get the idea. So that's how we work out what the bottom left tile is. And we do a similar process for the top right, but instead of getting the bottom one, we get the top row, because as I said before, zero in the in zero index is the top row. Uh, then we get the last uh, tile chunk in that list, and we get the starting coordinates. And then we add five to those coordinates, to because uh because like I said it's the, the starting coordinates is actually the bottom left tile of a chunk rather than the center or whatever. So we just need to offset that a bit to get the correct point for the top right tile. And then we call this uh calculate chunk the mouse is over. Uh basically what we do is first off for both of the axes we do uh we take away that axis from the bottom left tiles, well, same axis. So we take the mouse and scene dot x from the bottom left tile dot x, and we cast that as an integer because we wanted to use this as an index in the array. Uh, we then divide that value by five, so it's well, basically more or less similar to the number of chunks we have. Then we multiply that by minus one, so it's a positive number, and we do the same thing for the uh, for the y-axis, but also for the y-axis we have two extra steps. Uh, one is we need to take away the y-index from the height of the world in chunks. I think this is because how I've done uh, the uh, list of rows where the y-index, uh, as, you, as you sort of increase the index number, in the list, the actual y position of the chunk gets lower. And then we have to take away one because it was offset by one for some reason. I'm not sure why, but by taking away taking away one makes it work. And then right output is again just something from uh last time where we're outputting the tile at the mouse's point the other. And that was all that. Now we'll get onto the painting of the tiles. Okay, so now we've got on to working out whether we should paint tiles or not. Uh, I'm trying to go past. So if we basically we check if we want to paint tiles, uh, and then if we want to paint either single tiles or area an area of tiles, uh, then basically we do a check for input. So basically we want to make sure that there's a bit of mouse press uh, on mouse up. And if the button is zero, uh, so that's again corresponding to the left mouse click. And if we're holding down Alt, so we don't do it by accident, then we're basically using this uh, Y and X index we just assigned here to get the chunk in the grid. And then we get the tile in the chunk using the get tile method which has been uh, slightly altered because we don't need uh, to do this check anymore based on the position because we are because of 
how I've optimized the actual getting of the chunks. So yeah, so basically we get the tile in the scene and we call this set tile sprite method, which basically just takes in a sprite and paints the tile with it and says is blank equals false. Because like if, uh, basically the idea for is blank is uh, we can keep the, uh, basically any tile that is blank will get removed on play or set to fault, act of, uh, or deactivated, sorry. Uh, but that's not implemented yet. That's just like the idea I had for it. Yeah, so that just basically gets a sprite renderer and sets a sprite. Uh, yeah, and that's a good tile. Okay, so that's what it does for should we uh, for single tiles. For painting an area of tiles, it's a similar process. So we check for a mouse up, uh, and we also we use uh, all three buttons of the mouse. So first off is for setting the two corners of the area we want to paint, we use the left and right mouse buttons uh, while holding Alt. So you know, either zero or one, or one is the right one, if you didn't know. Uh, what we do is we save the uh, Y and X indexes of where the cursor was at the time, as well as the mouse position. And we say assign status two to say, all right, we've got a starting tile. But that uh, wouldn't stop you if you want, if you clicked uh, in the wrong place accidentally and you wanted to say assign it somewhere else, that'd be fine. Uh, Sorry, Bevan. Uh, identical thing for the next one, uh, which is to assign in the end coordinates. So to, it basically just assign it to a different variable, saying assigned end is true. And these are just a, a vector two and a vector three, I think. It's vector three. Yep. And if we press the middle mouse button and hold down Alt at the same time, if we've assigned both of these. First thing we do is we sort them into two different vector twos. Uh, one will have the lowest x and y, and the other will have the highest x and y. So it can mix and, mix and match from the uh, two different, the, the multi-paint start and the multi-paint end based on which is lower or which is higher. Uh, that is basically just so we can uh, cycle through the indexes, uh, or cycle through all the needed chunks and rows to make sure that we can paint to uh, call this method to uh sorry to call this method to paint it which we pass in the start positions or the two mouse positions that we stored for when we clicked the left and right mouse buttons sorry that seems like i explained it really badly i'll just go over it again quickly uh basically we saw the uh two we saw the index values so the two lowest x and y values are together and the two highest x and y values together. Uh, then we go through them in a for loop to go through each of the rows and the chunks in that particular row. And we call this uh, paint tiles in area method, which takes the uh, mouse uh, start position, which we stored here when we set the mouse index and multi-paint mouse end, which we did when we set the ending point. And we just pass in this uh, test sprite for now. And then we set assigned end and start to false. And for this TC uh, paint tiles and area method, uh, basically what it does is uh, it takes two vector frees and a sprite, and then it will basically uh, brown. No, it gets the uh, minimum. Uh, it does a similar thing to the uh, code. Oh, where is it? Sorry. Here. Except I, between writing this, I had a realization that someone had probably already done a lowest and highest method, so I wouldn't need to write it out, uh, which they have done with mathf.min and mathf.max. Uh, basically, what this does is, again, sorts the two indexes of the x and y in, uh, from both pos1 and pos2 so that the lowest x and y will be together and the highest x and y will be together. And that acts as uh, sort of defining a rectangle of, and that is then used to check if, for each of the tiles in the chunk, if the chunk is within these two coordinates, the way to check here. So if the x is more than the lowest x and less than the lowest y, if it's more than the lowest x and more than the lowest y and 
if the x is less than the highest y or and less than the highest x, then it will paint that tile. Yeah. Hopefully that made sense. And anything else? Uh, there is one more thing. Well, a couple more things actually in this script. Uh, uh, basically, a couple buttons. Uh, basically, if we're, if we're painting tiles, we'll draw this. So paint single. Uh, basically, just to switch the uh, painting modes around, and it will set the other one to false, so we don't get any confusion. So you can see here. And where else? And we've got a label to say sprite painter options. I tried to use the editor GUI dot indent, but I don't think it works in this. It might be for like actual editor windows rather than custom inspectors, so I might have to look into that. And what else? Uh, oh yeah, there's a draw cursor button. It's just basically just changes the draw cursor boolean in my target. And finally, uh, basically to avoid errors just popping up when we when there isn't a tile drawn. Uh, tile grid, sorry. Uh, I've just added if if the my target that initializes true, it will try and call all this set mouse position in scene malarkey. But if it's not, it won't, just because if there's no grid, then it can't really work out where it is in the grid. So that's why. So yeah. Uh, let's just give you a quick demo again. So again, I'll just expand this grid. And we can paint sprites, so paint single. So yeah, you can see we can paint uh, single tiles, and if we click paint area, we can defer. Oh, fucking not holding all armor. Sorry. We can just basically click uh, define areas to paint. And even if, like, So you see that? So yeah, that's what we did today. Uh, quite happy with the. We might need a bit of work actually. It needs to. I need to fine tune the rounding because sometimes when the clicks happen, it doesn't register. But that is a problem for another day, and it's not that big of an issue because it works. You know, you can paint areas and single tiles, but whatever. I'll stop rambling on. Uh, yeah. So next time, I think it'll be either be layers or loading resources so that we can have a what is it uh loading resources sorry so say you had like a, a load of uh, sprites in a folder it would basically allow you to automatically <coughs> sorry and to automatically import them into the level creator so you could uh like choose different sprites uh, to paint or whatever so yeah so that's what we're doing. Uh, yeah. Uh, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, check out Loud or Quiet. It's on itch.io. I did a update about a week and a bit ago on some new levels, which are really fun. Uh, still working on it. Doing a load of tiny little jobs that I needed to do to improve the quality of the game. And it's going well. So yeah. Uh, you got any comments, questions, whatever, leave them below. And I'll try and do my best to answer them. I'm not half asleep. And yeah, cheers for watching. Bye.